You heard concrete and metal smashing together, people screaming as they fly by. It was throwing walls out on the highway. I mean, it was just crazy. just so big, it just takes up the whole sky. I knew I was going to die. I mean, it's real hard to deal with. It was just like somebody opened the gates to hell. From the Weather Channel, this is Storm Stories with meteorologist Jim Cantore. Watch faster, Greg. It's catching us. you got to really go. you got to blaze, buddy. And over Kansas, spring 1991. Get up under the girders. Is that where you want to go? Yes. Terrified people take cover under a bridge as a violent tornado chews its way toward a turnpike overpass. A television crew shoots this rare video. News of their survival is broadcast around the world. The amazing footage mesmerizes 36-year-old Oklahoma City native Stuart Ernest. I was always pretty envious of those folks, you know, and I have that fortunate to be able to, you know, record that. I wanted to experience that in my lifetime. Stuart has had a passion for tornadoes ever since he was five years old when he saw three twisters in one unforgettable afternoon. They weren't on the ground, but from that point on, it just, you know, fascinated me. His odd wish to experience a tornado is about to become a horrifying reality. Monday, May 3rd, 1999, Oklahoma City. It's 8.30 a.m., and Stewart is already on the job at Emsco Electrical Supply Company. The warehouse employee is busy stocking supplies with his co-worker, 21-year-old Keith Webb. They've been working together for two years and are the best of friends. We got along from the minute we met each other. I mean, it was just like best friends all your life, you know? Our friendship had grown. Uh, we'd go out and do stuff together, and of course we worked together, and, and he's a good worker, a good friend. As the afternoon approaches, Temperatures push into the low 80s, above average for this spring day. Stewart senses something in the air. It was just hot. I kept telling Keith, you know, something was going to happen that day. 20 miles away at the University of Oklahoma, graduate student Mark Weinberg has a similar feeling. The 24-year-old is studying meteorology and plans to become a teacher. Mark interrupts his studying to check on computer models of an approaching storm. I knew the potential was there for tornadoes, and I have a final the next day. But I think my love for severe weather just took over. Like Stewart, Mark is fascinated by tornadoes. But Mark is an experienced storm tracker. A friend of mine called me and said, Mark, uh, looks like there's some storms popping. I said, Brian, we got to go. How quickly can you get here? Mark grabs his video camera and a map. By 3 p.m., he and his friend Ryan are heading southwest toward the countryside. We were going out there with the uh, hope to document what was going on, and by no means did we expect to see what we saw that day. About 4 p.m., a severe thunderstorm called a supercell develops 81 miles southwest of Oklahoma City. The supercell is produced by shears, which are winds that change direction. Those winds can begin rotating and turn into twisters. It looked like all the conditions were coming together. The instability and the shear profiles looked to be perfect to produce tornadoes. The wall plant is continuing to reform. This storm is simply for real. At 4.15 p.m., the National Weather Service issues a severe thunderstorm warning. Half an hour later, they release the first tornado warning. Tornado sirens are screaming in this town. By 
then marches 47 miles southwest of Oklahoma City. There, he encounters a tornado outbreak. We're seeing tornadoes at a distance going down. I mean, we're about two, three miles away, and we're just seeing tornado after tornado. Multiple twisters are dropping down from the sky in rapid succession. Mark captures the incredible moments with his video camera. is the understatement of my life. You just sit there gasping for breath because you're just in awe. The, the atmosphere can do something like this. It's now 5 p.m. In Oklahoma City, Stuart and Keith are unaware of the approaching storm. It's quitting time at Emsco, and the two men head their separate ways. I got home and and turn the TV on. And as I started to go into the kitchen, I noticed there was a tornado and it said live. Local stations are saturating the news with coverage of the unusual tornado outbreak. At least a dozen twisters drop from the powerful supercell over the next few hours, including one that hits Oklahoma City. Some are short-lived. But at 5.46 p.m., one tornado forms and stays on the ground for seven miles. It quickly grows into a colossal giant. Incredible, it is huge! Large, fat wedge! See power lines, debris everywhere! It was this brown monster. It was just covered with dust and debris, and there was mud falling out of the sky on us. Television reports indicate the tornado is bearing down on Chickasha, just 35 miles southwest of Stewart's house. He gets a daring idea and telephones Keith. And he was asking if I wanted to see a tornado up close. And I was like, no, man, I got to do my laundry. I got to clean my room. I've got several things I need to do around the house. But Stewart is determined to see a tornado in person. Fifteen minutes later, Stewart calls again to make another appeal. This time, Keith gives in. I was so excited and I wanted somebody else to see it, you know, if we were able to see it. And I was like, yeah, okay, we're going to drive around for a few hours, you know, not see anything. But the two friends are about to get more than they bargained for. At 6.30 p.m., Stewart picks up Keith. They speed south onto Interstate 35 toward the storm. Fifteen miles away, they cross into the neighboring city of Moore. There, they run head-on into the severe weather. It just started hailing and raining extremely, extremely hard. I mean, you couldn't see four or five feet in front of the steering wheel. The rain is too heavy to drive any farther. At about 6.45 p.m., Stewart pulls onto the emergency lane at the Shields Boulevard overpass. I knew that bridge, the underpass was there. And I told Keith, I said, if there's a spot under that bridge, we're going to take it. When we got there, it was like that, and it just stopped raining, hailing, wind quit blowing and everything. The two men take advantage of the calm and jump out of the car. They run up the embankment where they can see the mighty twister that's now several miles away. We went up on top of the bridge and looked back to the southwest from that area, and the tornado was visible, and it was huge. My eyes got real big, and it was just like a fear rushed over me. I mean, it was, it was almost horrible to see that. The giant wedge-shaped tornado has grown into an F5, the top rating of any tornado. Winds are estimated at an incredible 260 miles an hour or more. I was pretty much mesmerized just, you know, look at this thing. Uh, not really being aware of the destruction that it was causing. We were in awe because it, it was so huge. And then Stuart finally said, he's like, man, it's coming. Stuart notices debris flying through the air, and it's falling closer than he had expected. Part of this rooftop came out of the back side of the tornado, and I'm thinking to myself, if it's a mile away and it's a mile wide, it's pretty close to us. A wave of panic hits Stuart and Keith. They realize the monstrous tornado is heading... It's 
too late to escape. The tornado was just throwing so much debris that you just, you couldn't get away. And I told Keith at that point, it's time to get under the bridge. I said, you know, we could be the next Andover when they filmed that one under that bridge. Stuart and Keith run for cover under this overpass. But as they are about to find out, it is no match for the incredible power of an F5 tornado. That's next, when Storm Stories returns. It's just before 7 p.m. on May 3rd, 1999, and multiple tornadoes are breaking out all over Oklahoma. One mammoth F5 twister, stretching a mile wide, is heading straight for the city of Moore. One mile to the northeast, 24-year-old storm chaser Mark Weinberg tries desperately to stay out of its path. Oh, crap! It's closer than I thought! Mr. Green, go, go, go! I mean, it was right behind us, and we had to get, get going. I did not want to be that close, because I wasn't c completely familiar with those roads, and I did not want to get in a dead end. But Keith Webb and Stuart Ernest have no chance to escape. The towering twister is almost directly on top of them. The terrified men scramble up the embankment of an overpass for shelter. I told Stuart, I was like, I'm going to beat the crap out of you. I can't handle this. I don't know why I came. There's three radio antennas on 4th Street, the local radio station. I kept telling Keith, get a good look at those because they won't be here when we come out from under this bridge. And I'm like, okay, I don't need to be thinking about that right now, you know? Drivers heading south on Interstate 35 realize they are cut off by the mile-wide twister. More than a dozen motorists hit the brakes at the Shields Boulevard overpass. And all the cars that were pulling up there were slamming into each other, rolling, and then people were jumping out. There was a truck driver that pulled up, parked beside my pickup. He interlocked arms with Keith. I just pulled him up close to me by the belt. I said, hang on, and uh, he goes, this is going to be bad, and I was like, I know. Me and Stuart started telling everybody, hold on to each other, hand, you know, head to toe. The horrified group lies on the sloping pavement with arms and legs locked together. As the tornado approached, you get this sense of uh, helplessness at a point. And then the adrenaline kicks in, and you're thinking, okay, am I really ready for this? Stewart has a frightening flashback to the 1991 footage of Andover, Kansas. Those people, too, were hit by a tornado under an overpass. I started thinking, you know, and the, the comment that I made about Andover. Stewart can hardly believe he is about to have the same experience. As the gigantic twister roars closer, Keith strains to get a look. I raise my head up, because I'm more scared of what I can't see than what I can. You can start feeling stuff hitting you now. What Keith sees next is almost unbelievable. A 26-year-old woman named Tram Bowie is running toward the overpass. She is steps ahead of her husband, who is carrying their two children, ages two and four. He had one of them like this, and he had one of them by like an arm or a leg, just hanging, dragging, I mean, just running with him. As the tornado swoops in, the father drops and covers the two children. They desperately hold onto the guardrail. But the young mother isn't so lucky. She is stopped in her tracks by the powerful winds. And it just looked like somebody hit rewind on her, except instead of going this way, she went straight up. And that's the last I saw of her. Just then, the full force of the twister bears down on the overpass. Winds are howling at up to 300 miles an hour. The ground started shaking real violently, and of course, you hear people yelling under the bridge. I watched it suck the girl in front of me out. I mean, she was there, then I seen the back of her head raise up, and she was gone. It was just like somebody opened the gates of hell. And then I turned like this, and the guy that I was hanging on to, the truck driver, was gone. The unforgiving winds hurl tons of dirt and debris under the bridge. Large pieces of rubble fly through the air. Something hit, hit me in the shoulder, 
And I thought, my God, I just lost my arm. Stewart feels the sting of another piece of debris and realizes his arm is okay. I just kept thinking, God, don't let something hit me in the head. Please don't. And, and it was almost to a visual in your mind where you could see the layers of air going over your top of your body like they use in wind tunnels. But the awesome power of the twister proves too much for Keith. The extreme winds lift him up into the air. I felt myself bouncing off the bridge whenever it sucked me out. The debris was hitting me so hard that it beat me kind of into like the fetal position. I could hear him screaming my name, and as he went by, all I could think of, or think of was, God, I hope he's okay wherever he lands. The tornado tears at Keith with such force that it literally blows the shoes and socks off his feet. I said, please, God, don't let me die. And then in my head, I was thinking, you know, I said goodbye to myself, or goodbye to everybody I knew, because I knew I was going to die. Keith opens his eyes to get a rare view of the inside of a twister. All I could see was a bright, bright white light. I mean, that's it. And then it was probably the, the most pe peaceful moment through the whole tornado. I saw my life flash before my eyes. Every single person that you meet, you see them, especially in a near-death experience. You see their face one at a time. I mean, it's real hard to deal with. The next thing I saw was me in a casket. To see yourself in that position is like watching your own funeral. Then, the fickle tornado spits Keith out, dropping him in a ditch 75 feet away. The last thing I remember saying to myself before I opened my eyes and it could actually see was, uh, Please, God, don't let me die. I mean, that's all I could think about was not dying. Seconds later, the ferocious winds die down, and the tornado heads northeast toward Oklahoma City. Bruised and bleeding, Keith finds himself submerged up to his neck in mud and debris. And then uh, the first thing out of my mouth was Stuart. I started screaming for Stuart. As I got up and slid down the embankment, first thought that I had was I've got to find my friend. May 3rd, 1999, Oklahoma City. At 7.50 p.m., a mile-wide F5 tornado dissipates after being on the ground for nearly an hour and a half. Nine miles southwest, at the Shields Boulevard overpass, Stuart Ernest has escaped with only cuts and bruises. For several agonizing minutes, he searches for his friend, Keith Webb. Stuart finally finds Keith, 75 feet away, buried in a ditch. I had wood all over me, like glass sticking out of me. The hardest thing for me to deal with right there was because it was my fault. I chose to go there. Stewart carefully pulls Keith from the thick muck. An ambulance arrives minutes later. Barbara Yates is one of the first doctors on the scene. She ran straight towards me. She basically told me, she was, I'm not going to let you die. Keith was a mess. He looked like he stood at the exit end of a chipper shredder. He had stuff all over him. Keith and Stewart are quickly loaded into an ambulance and examined at a hospital 10 miles away. Amazingly, Keith is not seriously injured. I've got four or five nurses scrubbing my back, and they had tweezers in one hand and a rag in another. Stewart's injuries are also minor. Strangely, his brush with death has been a total rush, in spite of putting himself and his best friend in danger. I felt responsible for him. After he got out of the hospital, we had a chance to reflect on it. You know, of course, we cried. Those boys are bonded. Those boys will never forget each other. They're going to be friends for life. More than 70 twisters dropped down in the Midwest during May 3rd's unusual tornado outbreak. A total of 46 people lost their lives. It took workers nine days to locate the body of 26-year-old Tram Bowie. She had been buried under six feet of rubble, just feet from where Keith Webb was rescued. The rest of her family survived. Chasing so many violent tornadoes in one day, 
made a deep impression on meteorology student Mark Weinberg. Teaching no longer held his interest. Mark is now a television meteorologist in Little Rock, Arkansas, warning viewers of the next tornado. It's the strongest and most powerful thing that nature offers. Make no mistake, these things kill people. 